It's Heroes Month at the Incredible Story Studios. I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And I've got an incredible story for you. Well, once again, we'd like to welcome each and every one of you from across the United States and around the world, 24 different countries and counting. Uh, we're so happy to have you with us. So uh, We think of you each time we create a podcast, and uh, we have you in mind, believe it or not, and hope that uh, you find uh, the podcast interesting, entertaining, and worthwhile. Uh, with that said, uh, we are in January, the Heroes Month, and we're going to have a couple real-life heroes the uh, second couple weeks in January. But uh, this evening, we're going to have another superhero and uh, in 1973, uh, a fellow by the name of George Lucas, you perhaps recognize that name from Star Wars? Oh, yeah. Well, um, he wrote The Adventures of Indiana Smith. Well, uh, Indiana Smith. Yes, Indiana Smith. And uh, this was an opportunity for him to create a modern version of those movie serials that we talked about last week. From the Love 1930s them. Thirties and forties, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, in '73, the adventures of Indiana Smith were definitely on his mind. Then, four years later, he was uh, in Maui, and he was uh, trying to actually escape the enormous success of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, who would have thought that would yeah, happen? Yeah. Uh, so, his friend and colleague, uh, a fellow you may have heard of by the name of Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. He was uh, also there in Maui, which is uh, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, he was there on vacation. Uh, he had just finished work on a film called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. <laughs> now, uh, Steven Spielberg tore, uh, told George Lucas that he was interested in making, guess what, Gary, a James Bond film. Oh, yeah, I've heard about this. He's, he's actually brought that up several times. Mm -hmm. Currently, too, he would like to do an Indiana Jones yeah. film. Or, I mean, not Indiana, uh, James Bond film. The James Bond film, yes. But George Lucas told him, look, 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 look. I've got an idea better than James Bond. And then he outlined the plot of a story which would become known as Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. Now, Spielberg loved it. He called it a James Bond film without the hardware. And... It was Spielberg who said, you know what, Indiana Smith just doesn't come, uh, cut it. So he changed the name to Jones. Now, I don't know <laughs> what kind of a big difference it makes going from Smith to Jones. but I think it makes yeah. a huge difference. I mean, it just it has a better ring to it. Okay. Indiana, Indiana Smith, it doesn't, that sounds like a guy who sound, uh, sells insurance, yeah. not a guy who goes on adventures. Indiana Jones. Well, anyway, Steven Spielberg uh, changed the name that George Lucas had come up with. And then Spielberg and Lucas both made a deal with Paramount Pictures for not one, not two, not three, not four, but for five Indiana Jones films. Oh. Now, I have a personal connection with the man they brought in to write the script for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Do you know who wrote the script? Uh, wasn't that uh, Larry Kasdan? Lawrence Kasdan. Lawrence Kasdan. Larry Kasdan, yep, both. Uh, and um, I tell you uh, my personal connection real quick because uh, this will be a podcast down the road, uh, some of my adventures on uh, one of his movie sets. But um, I was cast in one of his movies uh, in 1985 called uh, Silverado. And so that's where I actually worked with Lawrence Kasdan. And so yeah. uh, we'll be talking about that later on down the road. But in any event... He's the one who wrote the script for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, uh, Kasdan said that for the character of Indiana Jones, he wanted to capture the essence of old Hollywood stars. Mm. And he mentioned several old ones, Errol Flynn. Well, Errol Flynn was a swashbuckler, wasn't he? That he was. Uh, he was, you know, he was the hero in so many of the pirate movies. And he was a real, truly a, a swashbuckler. Burt Lancaster. Um 
Clark Gable, and uh, Steve McQueen. So, yeah, Steve McQueen, I could definitely see mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. being closer to Indiana Jones. Yeah. So he took this mix of actors and in uh, the back of his mind and and uh, visualized uh, the character. Now, George Lucas wanted the character to be more like James Bond. So Kasdan had to write a different version of the scene um, where Brody goes to his house. And, and this is what Kasdan said. Uh, George wanted Indy to be a playboy, so Jones was going to answer the door wearing a tuxedo. Then when Brody went into the house, he would see a beautiful Harlow-type blonde sipping champagne in Indy's living room. My feeling, this is uh, Larry Kasdan, mm-hmm. was that Indiana Jones' two sides, professor and adventurer, made him complicated enough without adding the playboy element. Oh, I agree. And so, thanks to Lawrence Kasdan, who, again, I've had the privilege and the pleasure of working with uh, on a movie set, uh, is the fellow who really um, shaped Indiana Jones the way we know him today. Yeah, because I feel like uh, Indiana Jones is an every man's kind of man. He, he He's not the kind of person who... Uh, goes around like James Bond to gamble or fancy places. He's he's a, he's an adventurer. And out of the five movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark always has been and continues to this day to be my absolute favorite in the series. Yes. Now, here's the thing. The fifth film is being filmed right now. So currently we only have four. We got uh, Raiders, um, Indiana Jones, and the Temple of Doom. And Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, and Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Um, so they're currently filming I, what I believe to be the final one, but they're going to, uh, if I if I understand them correctly, they're going to change hands, and there's going to be a passing of the hat and the whip to a new Jones character. Well, yes. One of his children, I think. Yeah, because, um, you know, uh, almost 50 years after he was created, it's about time that he... Uh, be allowed to retire and let somebody mm-hmm. else, uh, you know, take over saving the, the world. Oh, I think so. Now, uh, a little bit of interesting information. Uh, you know who uh, play was actually cast to play the original uh, Indiana Jones? No. Tom Selleck. No kidding. Tom Selleck was cast, had already uh, done test screenings and everything, outfitted everything. He was going to be Indiana Jones. And Tom Selleck, you know, he's famous for having his mustache and everything. Yeah, yeah. So all of the original test footage, you see Tom Selleck as Indiana Jones with his mustache and everything. But what changed it was the fact that he had gotten the part of uh, Magnum P.I., you know, the the show, mm-hmm. Magnum P.I., the TV show. He had gotten the, the lead part in Magnum P.I., and so he had to break his contract and take that on. Thank goodness he did, because I couldn't imagine anybody else playing the character that he played in that show. And then Harrison Ford was brought in. And Harrison Ford wasn't going to be used originally because he had already been used in the Star Wars films. And so Lucas didn't really feel like he wanted to give that role to Harrison Ford. And so he reluctantly did it. But honestly, I couldn't see anybody else playing Indiana Jones. Oh, I know. I know. It all worked out for the best. Uh Tom Selleck got his Magnum P.I., and uh, now, of course, he's uh, still big with his uh, Blue Bloods uh, portrayal. Sure. And um, so he's a, a major a force in television, and Harrison Ford, a major force on the movie screen, and he'll always be remembered as Indiana Jones. Now, Gary, I talked about a little personal connection with Lawrence Kasdan. Yeah. You have a personal experience connected with Indiana Jones. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, so a few years ago, we went to um, Disney Hollywood Studios, which was formerly MGM Disney, and they have the Indiana Jones stunt show, which has been there for quite some time and is my favorite thing at Disney, hands down. I mean, next to the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, uh, my other big thing to visit every time I go is the Indiana Jones stunt show. And I can remember ever since I was a kid wanting to be one of the uh, people from the audience that gets called to be an extra in the show. And I was so pumped 
when uh, the last time I went to Disney with my brother-in-law and his wife and uh, my wife, Danielle, uh, we got there very early before any of the big crowds had come. And so they were, they had just started asking, would anybody like to volunteer? And we were up near the front. And of course I had my red Harvard hat on and I took it off and I started waving my hat. And then my brother-in-law, Alex, he's pointing at me and he's saying, this guy, this guy. (laughs) And all of a sudden the woman goes, all right, you sir with the red baseball cap, come on over. (laughs) And so I go back and I had never done this before. I, I, at least not with the stunt show. I think I did one other thing I did uh, over there at um, NBC when we went to Burbank. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have a little tour at NBC Studios, and uh, you can go around and they ask for volunteers for other things. Anyway, um, but I had never done anything like this with like a, a Disney live show. So they tell you where to go, and they have a little closet of costumes in the back. And so they just kind of grab something that, looks like it might fit you and they hand it to you and you're back there with a few other people now i knew that there was a plant in the show because there's a section where they're talking about how to take a punch and they take one of the volunteers and then the volunteer gets the living daylights beat out of him and then you find out that he's a stunt man with the show and he was just a plant the entire time he was planted in he was planted in there undercover undercover so that people really buy into it but what I found out is that there are two people that they plant in there with the group. And the second one is the person who screams. And uh, I know this because one of the things I was asked to do when I came out, uh, they said, uh, let's see if you can scream as loud and as long as you possibly can. So I got a deep breath. Now, I was in chorus in high school. You know, breath control is my thing. And you got to be able to hold those notes for a while. And so uh, I belted out this uh, long scream, and the uh, the woman next to me continued on and on and on and on and on and on and on indefinitely. And then I realized, oh. <laughs> another undercover plant. This is another undercover plant because my microphone was working, but I don't believe her microphone was on. It was a recording. And they have this for every show. So this is this is something that is it continues on and on and on. So they have two people that they put in in the show. Um, for those comedic reasons. Who are Disney employees. Right. And um, and then they kind of disappear into the background after they've done their little part. Um, but it was a blast. So you start out with that, and then you go off to the side, um, and they tell you where to stand so that you're safe because they go into the stunt part where uh, Indy is, you know, dodging the boulders and all that. That may have been before. I don't remember. Anyways, but they get set up after the, the whole getting the idol and running away from the boulder and the spears and they open up the the set and now you're in this uh turkish uh marketplace type scene and so they tell you to go over here and and uh they they say all right you guys touch this and you can do this and pretend like you're shopping and so you're interacting with people and uh and you're just having fun pretending like this and then you got to gasp and everything the hardest thing for me though was not smiling I was so happy and so excited to be in that show. I couldn't I couldn't stop smiling. My my face, my cheek muscles were hurting so bad cuz I was so happy that I was doing that. And you just have to kind of pretend like oh and then point and all that kind of stuff and you know it, it was just it was a blast. You're in the marketplace. Can you do that gasp for us one more time? This is <gasps> Oh, that's, that's the one you used. That's it. So. That's it. That's official okay. right there. <laughs> um and so so that was that was a lot of fun, and then they uh, they they go into having like the little stunts, and you got to run around and all this kind of stuff, and then uh, then they have the Nazis come out. Now, um, Alex and my other brother in law Joseph, they have their own podcast, Diz His, and they did uh, a, a show about the history behind the Indiana Jones show. And so, uh, one of the things that they mentioned, and I didn't even notice it, uh, Disney took all the swastikas off of the mm-hmm. airplanes and uniforms uh, so that they don't have anything that mm-hmm. directly ties anything to Nazism or right. anything like that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But um, but uh, looking back at it, I, I was thinking, well, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, they did. They actually took that stuff off so that it's more 
uh, geared to just towards the action, and they don't have really anything that's uh, historically, yeah, politically involved with that. Um, but it was interesting because uh, one of the guys who walked behind me goes, "Hey, how's it going, man?" I turned around, and it was a guy I had gone to high school with, who is now one of the stunt performers. Uh, he plays one of the the soldiers in the show, and um, I, I had a couple classes with him. I, I don't remember his name, mm-hmm. sad to say. But it was funny recognizing somebody and having them recognize you when you're in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but they brought out the bullwhip and everything, and you know the guys, you know, demonstrating. And I kept thinking, God, I hope they have a thing where they ask if anybody wants to crack a bullwhip, <laughs> you know, with the volunteers, because that's something I could shine at. You know, like they're like, oh, these guys don't know how to crack a bullwhip, and I, because I love bullwhips. I've got several of them. I know how to use them. You make them. I make them myself, and uh, it's it's a hobby, and so I love it. And it's partly because, well, not partly. It's a hundred percent because of Indiana Jones and my passion for that. Uh, so I was I was kind of hoping that would happen. I had my fingers crossed. It just did not. Uh, but that's okay. That was okay. Um, so you get through the whole thing, and then when it gets to the explosion parts and stuff like that, they excuse you, they thank you, and I, the only thing I have to say I was really disappointed about. I really hope that they would have given something to the volunteers at the end, some little uh, trinket or something to say, I was part of the Indiana Jones stunt show, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, nothing more than like a pen or something like that. It would have meant the world. Uh, The only thing I got was a free cup of water at the end of it. Free cup of water. I got a free cup of water. They, they go, all right, you guys can head on out to the uh, back to your seats and so, uh, so they go back and they go, hey, here, you can have a cup of water. So <laughs> what did I get? I got one of those little snow cone things that you use when you go over to this, the water cooler. And I had a cold drink of water after that. So after everything was all said and done, what I did do is I made my way over to the little Indiana Jones trading post store. And I, I bought myself an Indiana Jones t-shirt. And I bought myself uh, a button that said uh, the Indiana Jones live stunt show. And it's got indiana jones and it's got two cobras on the side and it's gold and so for me that's my little uh, trinket to remember wow. being a part of that because i absolutely loved it that was the highlight of my life and i may never get to do that again um but if uh, if not it doesn't bother me at all because at least i had the experience of being able to do it and it was fun Yes, yeah, so you performed many times uh, over there at uh, disney world because when you were in high school your chorus would always uh, go for the uh, Christmas candlelight concerts. Yes. And so uh, those were held over at Epcot. And so you performed uh, several concerts over at Disney World. That I did. And then, of course, the highlight of everything, the Indiana Jones stunt show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's wonderful to have as a memory. In the future, I think we should do uh, a show about the candlelight processional because I did I did five of them. and uh, And they were... They were absolutely a blast mm-hmm. to do because the people you get to meet. But that's mm-hmm. a, that's again that's a story for another time. Um, but uh, but no, it was a lot of fun, um, and uh, I look forward to the day when I can go back over to uh, Hollywood Disney and and see it again. Now that uh, uh, I have Oliver, um, when he's old enough, I know he'll appreciate it. Hopefully, they'll still have it around when he's old enough mm-hmm. to appreciate the show himself. And for those who don't know, Oliver is Gary, my son. Boy. Yeah, my son. So um, I, hopefully it'll stay around long enough uh, that he can enjoy that. And I hope it will because, I, like I said, they got the new Indiana Jones movie coming out, mm-hmm. and they do have plans of you know continuing that series with uh, with a new character. So, so folks, you're hearing this just at the right time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not too late to get involved with Indiana Jones. Oh yes, absolutely. So, guess what? It's that time again. Yes, I'm Richard. I'm Gary. And that was an incredible story. Uh, if you were listening for the ter- uh, for <laughs> if, if you're li- listening for the first time, uh, like and subscribe to our show. We have new episodes every Friday. We look forward to you uh, joining us again. Yes. All right. See you again. Bye. Bye bye.